He has done his master's in psychology before completing PhD in clinical hypnotherapy. He is also an internationally certified hypnotist and Reiki master, as well as pioneer of ladder in the country. Dr. Moyes has also done various other certifications from internationally acclaimed institutes of mind sciences and has been conducting workshops and courses extensively in the country as well as abroad. He has the credit of training thousands of people from all walks of life. Besides, our worthy speaker has also appeared on numerous national and international TV and radio channels as guest and field expert, sharing his insight and research in the field as well as providing online advice. He has authored a book, namely Pebbles on the Beach, that has been published both nationally and internationally. Sir, on behalf of the commanding, faculty, and cadets, I formally welcome you, and without further ado, request you to kindly address the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Dr. Moise Hussain. Bismillah, my name is Lamani Kunti. Uh, hope you don't mind me. Because what I am going to share with you uh, concerns your mind. The subject is mind. And this is where people start minding. You see, in normal conversation, we always use this term, I am sorry, don't mind. It just happened by mistake, don't mind. Why do we say the word don't mind? So in order to understand why we say it, we must understand, do we have a mind? And uh, what is the mind? Now all of you sitting here, if I ask you, those of you here for the first time, uh, I've been coming here for quite some time. If I was to ask you, where is the mind? Can anybody tell me? Just point it out. Ji sir. Here? Okay, great. Anybody else? Where is the mind? Just relax. In my class, I want people to just relax. So it's here, right? 
Do we agree? No, it's not clear. Anybody knows what is the distance between Earth and Moon? Around 300, 384,000 kilometers, right? So when on a night, moonlight, you are watching this beautiful moon, you know your mind is there also on the moon, which means your mind has a size of 384,000 kilometers. And when you watch the sunshine or when you watch the sunlight, when you watch uh, the morning sun or you watch the sun uh, set on a beach, like you must be seeing a beautiful sunset here, then the uh, sun is approximately uh, 284 point million miles from the earth. And your mind is there. The size of the mind is as bigger as the, the distance between the sun and the earth. So if it, the mind is here, then how can it reach everywhere? Mind is everywhere. It is your consciousness. When you focus on something, your mind is there. When you see something, your mind is there. When you hear something, your mind is there. So mind is not limited within the skull. In the skull, you have something called the brain, which of course, a lot of people love to eat. So what we are talking about is something that requires a lot of contemplation and understanding. So I'm, I just made few slides here to make it easy because the subject itself is uh, quite intriguing and difficult to comprehend. We have never been told where is the mind. We have never been told about what the mind is all about. The only thing we know is that we have a biocomputer within the skull which is more powerful than even the most powerful computer, supercomputer that exists today. Even today, the human brain is more powerful, more capable, more intelligent than the topmost computer that is available today. So let's understand. Oh, well, this is about us, so okay. You know, you know uh, since last 45 years, I've been trying to teach people, use your mind. So, maybe I'm successful, I don't know. Let's think of a while, why. This is important. Think. What if you are thinking right now, if you are thinking about something, are you a thought? One of the things that we ask people in our seminars is, who are you? And then normally you say, I am Salman. Somebody will say, I have a Buddha I am John. Then, are you John? What if I change your name? What will you be? You will be something else. The name is just a label. It's a tag that helps us to identify this individual, right? He can have a birth certificate, he can have a death certificate after he dies, his family can have a death certificate, he can have a marriage license. This is only for to be able to identify a person. But is John the real thing? No, he is not. So then if you are thinking about something, are you a thought? Yes and no. If you are a thought, then who are you? If you are not a thought, who are you? And who is thinking? See, I am thinking about something. I am thinking about when will the new auditorium be ready? at the Pakistan Naval Academy. I was talking to the commandant about certain things and we were in the room, we were talking about certain things. So I am thinking, so if I am thinking, then I can't be the thought. So I am something other than thinking, because I am thinking. So I is not the thought, is it? It is difficult, right? I am not the thought. I am thinking. I choose to think. Very simple. When you get angry, you are not anger. You feel angry. You feel anger. It means there is a choice, always choice with you, whether to be angry or not angry. The moment you understand this, you have your anger under control. But when you are angry, you actually become anger. Then there is no control. So when I am thinking, it means I is something else and thinking is a process. 
So when I am thinking and I know that I am thinking, I choose what to think and what not to think. It is the choice I always have. People don't understand. When they are thinking, they become the thought. This is why when you are anxious, you become anxiety. When you are angry, you become anger. When something goes wrong, my God, something happened, you are sad. So the moment you realize, I choose to think, which means I am not the thought, but I can have a thought. Let us understand what is the mind. Is mind the brain? Definitely no. Is it the, is it the senses? No. Is it the nervous system? No. So what is the mind? Say there is a driver in a vehicle or a chariot and this driver is the intelligence. The reins is the mind. So the reins decide where the intelligence goes. Got it? The horses are the senses and the soul is the passenger. So within this body of ours, physical body, embodied is something that has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amre Rafi, it has come with us. Now we have five senses that direct us toward the external world that keep us in touch with the external world. We see, we hear, we feel, we touch, we taste and we smell. So they connect us with the external world. Right? The rays is what is important because where do you want to go? Your intelligence can be diverted towards a particular objective, a particular goal. So that's the power of the mind that it takes you where you want to go. So if you say, I don't want to be unhappy, believe me, you'll be unhappy for the rest of your life. Because your brain cannot process the word don't. It cannot process the word no. So always think what you really want instead of what you don't want. First principle. Because the moment you start thinking about something, your brain has to process that thought. It cannot not process. It's not possible until you are in a coma. So the moment you start thinking about anything, your brain has to process that thought. When the brain processes any thought, it creates certain feelings and certain changes in your hormonal system, in your endocrine glands. So you choose what you want to think. Because then your brain will act accordingly. Brain by itself does not have a brain. Your brain doesn't have a brain. You are the one who can direct your brain. So make sure you do it wisely, intelligently. Now, we have to learn to regulate the mind. The word is not control, but usually people use the word control. Basically it's regulating, channelizing, developing the mind. What are the things? Beautiful quote, uh, you must have heard about, I think uh, John Milton also said that mind in itself can create a hell or a heaven. There is something similar. Your mind can be your greatest enemy and it can be your greatest friend. Depends the kind of thought that you put into your mind. Thought. So if you believe that you can do something, you can do it. And if you think you can't do it, you can't. I know life here is very tough. I've been coming here for so many years. Always I come to know that the carrying life is very tough, tough routine, tough. Life is tough. But then why are you going through this phase? Because in order to become something, you need to have the mental and the physical toughness. If you don't go through tough practices, you will never be able to face life and the profession that you are about to go into and become a part of the Navy wherever you are from, wherever country you come from. So, your mind needs to be controlled by you. So again, there is something interesting. Your mind controlled by you. So again, mind is not you. You are the one who is directing the mind, controlling the mind, channelizing the mind, or regulating the mind. Now a mind that is not under control, not regulated, not channelized, what happens? Lot of things happen. You have loss of confidence. There is depression and this is very common with the, our country and the light suddenly go off, it's okay. Stress, loss of trust, lot of things. You can read on this? Is it visible? Yes sir. Okay, fine, great. So, 
things can happen when mind is not in your control? Then mind controls you. When you don't control the mind, it controls you. Let's go for the next one. Now this is very interesting. I learned this when I was around 16 and a half, 17 years of age. And I learned from one of my teachers about types of mind, states of mind. And if you go through this, you will find out what kind of a mind you have. Some people have this word distracted mind, disturbed mind, grasshopper mind, stupefied mind, turbulent mind. These are different states of mind. Any state that occupies our beingness, most of the time, it means we are in that state of mind. So some people are restless all the time. They have thoughts coming in, going in, thoughts coming in, going in. Restless all the time. You see them moving when they are sitting. The legs moving, the hands moving, keep on moving. It's okay, it's a state of mind. Grasshopper, they don't stick to one idea. They keep on jumping from here to there, all the time. Grasshopper mind. Grasshopper, you know what is grasshopper, right? TD. So it jumps from one idea to another. It doesn't stick on one thing. Doesn't follow one routine. Can change subjects in the studies continuously. From one sport, they will jump into another sport. Stupefied. We call it stupid people. They have ideas which are unrealistic. They think about things which is unrealistic. Not pertaining to the environment that they live in. Turbulent mind. Usually people who have a turbulent mind tend to go for violence in their life. They become criminals, they tend to go for violence, something. Stubborn mind. They don't listen. Even if they are wrong, they try to take a position, even if they are wrong. So there are people who are stubborn, you must have seen people who are very stubborn. Next is one-pointed state of mind, one of the best states of mind. People who have one-pointed state of mind seem to achieve a lot in their life, which means they are focused on one particular thing at the time. If they are doing the studies, they are not thinking about anything else except the studies. And the last one is mostly people who are highly holy, not really just holy, people who are spiritually inclined, they meditate a lot, they have called this called arrest state of mind. Now, in arrest state of mind, when a person is focusing on something, regardless of what the person is focusing on, the mind gets arrested, which means the mind becomes one with the object. Like if you are concentrating on an apple, you become an apple. That is the power of an arrested state of mind. It's difficult to define like this, how does it work, but it works amazing. Let's go for the next one. Now, there are three levels of mind. Conscious, I'm sure you all know. Subconscious and unconscious. Basically, there are two only. Conscious and subconscious. Now, subconscious is like a storehouse. I am sure over here you have a store, right? Where you put all the stuff that you don't require. So the stuff that you put there is in a godown or a storehouse, subconscious of the storehouse. The actual power that you have to be able to create something extraordinary in your life, to become what you want to become, lies in your subconscious mind. Subconscious mind has got memories, it has got feelings, all good and bad things, everything, all habits, everything belongs to the subconscious mind. The conscious mind has about 10% of the ability. The only thing that the conscious mind has is willpower, which sometimes fails. Because if the subconscious has a very strong emotion about something, your willpower will not work. For example, smoking. A person smokes. He wants to give it up. He has the willpower, he can't stop smoking. Why? Because internally at the subconscious level, there are strong emotions associated with smoking. Like for example, uh, people would say, my God, you look handsome, you look smart when you smoke, you look manly when you smoke. So that emotion is so powerful, it completely takes over the willpower. Unconscious is when you're asleep. That's your unconscious part of mind. The strange thing is, even unconscious works there was an experiment done uh, many, many years back ago in certain, uh, on the certain islands in Japan. Japan has got many islands. And they found out through experiment something remarkable. 
it is called collective consciousness collective consciousness and the most beautiful example of collective consciousness in islam is the juma prayers and the hajj so the collective consciousness says that when people gather at a place and they think of one thing somehow the mind i said your mind is here and your mind is at the sun also your mind connects with other minds and it creates a kind of a wave pattern that begins to change the environment your neighborhood your city can change if people think one particular thought for some period of time at a particular period of time something happens remarkably this is the power of conscious mind collective consciousness collective consciousness another phenomenon which was discovered after that was collective unconsciousness now what is collective unconsciousness for example i keep on throwing garbage on the road and i keep on cursing the government and i don't like my parents and i don't like my teachers now these kind of emotions and feeling they somehow transmit outwards from my physical body from my physical body and they seem to influence people around me and people who are not even connected with me somebody living in brazil i don't even know that person he doesn't know me my waves seem to affect him if he is connected in a way that i don't know unconsciously is connected with me i don't know because the entire human race is connected you know that right we are all from one father and one mother so we somehow are connected if we are happy the world will be happy if we are sad the world will be sad this is the power of collective unconsciousness collective consciousness is when you know people sitting with you in a certain mosque in a certain neighborhood and they do a kind of a thought process a meditation a prayer together it's like that. okay ji uh, what time do you want me to stop uh half an hour then to be made more okay techniques for regulating the mind how do you regulate the mind ah uh, senses senses needs to be controlled our senses our senses basically go outwards so agar aap if you have ever seen uh, uh, the three buddhas hear no evil see no evil speak no evil see it buddha three buddhas because the three senses are important you are disconnected from the external world if you allow the senses to remain internal not external if they are externalized then every information that comes from the external world has to be processed i told you your brain has to process so one of the things is control your senses don't see things which are not required to be seen don't hear sounds that are not supposed to be heard or voices that are not supposed to be heard right why so this is what you need to do and especially negative now certain people in your life can be negative you can't throw them away you can't get out certain relationships are so important that you have to live with those relationships so what do you do try not to think too much about what they say that's step two positive thinking look at positive things be with positive people hear positive things a lot of motivation stuff on the internet is there listen to that stuff listen to speakers who talk about positivity right the more you think of positivity the more positivity you feel there's a principle of the mind whatever you focus on grows remember whatever you focus on grows because your mind creates that ripple in time and space so matter is influenced by your mind your mind is energy it is pure consciousness so the moment it focuses on matter you know what is matter right this table is matter this this podium is matter everything is matter our bodies are made up of matter so if you focus on the matter of anything it enlarges not physically at the level of energy so if you are focusing on a negative thought your negative thought becomes enlarged and if you think on something positive let's say tomorrow you will be a good day 
I am hopeful something will happen. The concept of taqwa in religion is extremely important to be understood. I am not a clergy, so I am not going to talk about these things. But hope, to me too, important. Always have hope about tomorrow. Always live your life with the hope for tomorrow. And believe in a higher, benevolent reality. That's it. These two things are important. Next. Uh, life, in life we have to make certain commitments. I'll make a small demo to show me. Just stand up on it. Let's see the power of your mind. Let's see the power of your mind. Hello, 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 hello. Can you help me out? Hello. Okay. Let's see the power of your mind. Uh, back so that you are arm's distance from each other. Right? Yes. Yes, lady, arm distance. Great. Now, this is for Fix your legs. Don't move your legs. Make sure they're stuck. They're stuck. They will not move. Right? It's stuck. It's like a magnet. Stuck. Ready? No. Come on, smile, guys. What is that? It's all about. Right? So this is what you do. I will ask you to raise. Which is your right side? That is your right side. Remember this. So when I ask you to raise your hand, and I ask you to twist to the right as much as you can. Right? Let's say this is my limit. I can't go beyond this. Then I come back and put my hands down. Then I'll make you use your mind. So raise your hand, twist to the right, and see how far you can go without hurting yourself. Did you check how far you can go? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, now come back. Make sure you don't move your legs. Close your eyes, hands down. Close your eyes, hands down. Now I want I'm teaching you how to use your mind. So I want you to imagine, all of you can imagine, young people like me imagine. Your spine is made up of rubber. Remember when we were kids? In the school we had this pencil and a rubber. We used to erase everything. And sometimes the rubber has this beautiful aroma, smell, strawberry, peach. So I want you to imagine your spine is made up of rubber. And it is so soft. And believe me, it is so warm. Now I want you to make a movie. Don't move, just make a movie. Make a video in your mind of five seconds. And the video will be that you have raised your hand you have twisted to the right and my God, you were able to twist more than before. Make this five second video, then keep on playing it, reminding it, playing it ten times. So without moving, just make a video. In this video, you are moving to the right and you are able to move much more than before. And make, play this video ten times. Play, rewind, play, rewind, play, rewind, keep on moving. Now open your eyes, raise your hands, raise your arms and twist to the right. And see how far you can go. More? Come back. Smile, laugh, hands down. Why are you so serious? Sit down. It was something you would never think of. How can my spine be made up of rubber? <clears throat> but you did not repeat that suggestion of mine. Why was it coming from me? This was coming from a person who's come here to teach you something. That's why you could not critique it. Otherwise, you could say, My God, nonsense. My spine is made up of solid <clears throat> core. How can it be rubber? So now take this little example into the rest of your life's education, personal life, relationships, everything. In your education which you are going through and your training, there are hardships, right? Tough assignment. Now if you think, my God, this is too tough, how will I do it? You will not be able to do it. So if you imagine the same exercise, imagine it is such an easy assignment. 
and see yourself having done it properly and pass and clear and your boss and your teachers are congratulating you for that. So when your mind accepts something which has not happened, it is easy for your body to fall. And this great thing was uh, taught to many by the famous Muhammad Ali boxer. You see, except for one fight, he never lost any fight. So he was asked, when a book was written, I think it was biography, how come you were winning all the matches? He said, very simple. <coughs> Before the fight, when I was sitting in my locker room, I would close my eyes, listen to this, Muhammad Ali is a great boxer and a great Muslim. We were in uh, Los Angeles, when we walk through the Hall of Fame, what is that? Walk of Fame, okay. They have a street uh, which is very long in Los Angeles, we were there last year. So they have these names of the top personalities of the world, including uh, presidents of the world, famous personality, actor, actresses, sports people, athletics, something like that, right? Everybody is there. Muhammad Ali is not there. Then they asked him, he said, how can I let Muhammad Ali be written on the street and people putting their shoes on it? He never let him, so his name is not there. He was a great person. So he said, when I am in the locker room, I will close my eyes and I will imagine, I will imagine, then I am in the ring, the fight has started, I am fighting and I have won! And people are clapping and I am on somebody's shoulder and everybody is so happy. <coughs> he would not critique that idea. He would not say this is nonsense. Because I have not fought yet. In his mind he won! So when he won in his mind, he said when I would go into the ring, actually, in my mind I already won the fight. So it was so easy for me to win. This is the power of it. So whenever there is a difficult task, whenever there are difficult situations in life, in relationship, imagine it has resolved, it has been solved. I have gone through it. I am successful. The moment you think about it, your nervous system, your body, entire endocrine gland system, hormonal system in your body will respond and you will be able to win the task, you will be able to go through the difficult life with ease. This is what meditation is all about. Meditation is all about this. It's focusing your mind on one particular thought. So if you can do that, you will do wonders. Oh, I see there is light left. Because if I think I made a point. Oh, done. That's okay. So otherwise, if you don't use your mind, your mind uses you. So you are in your own cage. And we don't even realize that we are in a cage, we are living in a cage. My ideas, my model of the world, my belief, my paradigm, this is mine. And your relationships? I like this. You must be workaholic. Let's see how many of you are workaholic. First of all, money. Rania, this is workaholic. So you have to come out right now in your office. So all you need to do is to keep on working, working, working. So don't do that. Don't be a workaholic. Manage your life in a way that you have time for work, you have time for study, time for recreation, time for your family, and time for yourself. And don't run after money all the time. Money is important in life, yes, it's important. But don't let money run you. Don't let it control you. Don't let anything control you. Because desire should not control you. Now, many I can ask your uh, superiors if they would be willing to share this slide with you. And you can read a lot of material that is there. You can read all this, right? A few things when done in different ways. One of the best <coughs> medicine for depression and tension is being with people that you love and care. And nature. If you love nature, spend time there. I have a gym. When I live, there's a gym. 
but I don't go to the gym. Every day I go to a park. Why? Because I am amongst the trees and the grass. I am with nature. I love walking there. And it's hot. The gym has AC. But still I prefer to walk. And my daughter says I got my skin is not turned tan, black. Why? Because I used to walk in the sun. Great TV. You can go through all this deep present. Reach out. Social networking is very important. You must have friends. You know, there was a gentleman sitting in a park, he was 60 years old. Somebody like me approached him and asked him, Sir, how old are you? He said, 60. After a while, one of his friends came and sat down with him. They were there, started chatting. We went and asked the second gentleman, How old are you? 60, says the sir. Now, 30, 30. Two people with 60 years of age sitting together are now 60 years of age. They are 30, 35 because they are socializing. So when you be with people, are you with people, then your age actually mentally reduces to feel young. You don't need to fall in love to feel young. Just be with people and you can feel young. Okay, we are always there to help and assist you whenever you want. We always reply, respond to you on a suitable time. Thank you very much. We have to answer. Can you hear me loud, please? Uh, I'm Oxygenet. Uh, I'm Oxygenet Zishan from Shamshi Indian. So we uh, often talk about uh, the positivity and its infinite benefits. So, so can you please kindly elaborate some techniques so we sustain positive even if the time is difficult, even if we are in a bad situation, in a vulnerable situation? Okay. You will be joining the new Leaving means you will be the ship and the ship is facing a strong. What do you do? You try to save the, face, uh, the ship? Yes. Face the strong? Yes. Exactly the same thing. Around you there will be a lot of negativity. Now we don't use the word negative or positive. We use a very different term. Positive means resourceful, right. beneficial and negative is ambitious. Right? Because negativity and positivity they coexist in life. Without negativity, you cannot have positivity. Without positivity, you cannot have negativity. Not possible. So they coexist. So in life, there will always be unresourceful states, unresourceful people, unresourceful situations. That will definitely uh, create a challenge. So what you need to do is hope. Hope is one of the most powerful medicine, written as I can ever recommend. Always keep hope. Always know that tomorrow is going to be better, regardless of what happens. Uh, there is a story of a man, an old man, who had one son and a farm and uh, he had three horses. Uh, and he had this habit of whatever happened, he would say, whatever happens, happens for the good. Whatever happens, happens for the good. So one day, the villagers come running to his home and say, my God, your uh, horses, they're gone. They're missing. They're gone. And he said, whatever happens, happens for the good and the guy says, the religious says, are you crazy? Your horses have gone, how will you uh, use it to plow the field? He says, whatever happens, happens for the good. After a few days, the three horses returned back with 20 horses, wild horses. Time passed, his son had an accident and he broke his leg. All the villagers were ready. People are always there ready to tell you, my God, how unfortunate you are. You lost everything in your life. They are ready to tell you all this. So the villagers came and said, My God, we are very sorry to hear your son is now sick. His leg has been broken. So who is going to plow the field? He says, Whatever happens, for the good. And the villagers laughed and said, This is an idiot guy. This old man is an idiot. He is crazy. His son's leg is broken and he says, Whatever happened, happens to good. After a few days, the king, there was a war in this country. Another king attacked this, this kingdom. So the king uh, told his uh, soldiers to go and search for young men from every village to come and fight to save the country. So they came into this village, they took all the young men. He, they could not take this uh, old man's son because his leg is broken. After a few months, all the young men who had gone to fight with the king died except his son. So sometimes we, we need to have patience and believe that something good is going to happen. The moment you start to believe, you attract positivity. 
resourceful state you attract whatever good is for you so keep thinking whatever that is good for you and for others thank you next thank you mr i'm from college of ingenieurs and i'm a doctor by profession i have been in ssc medical so so my question is sir, I, i was like at the first point what is mind like for us we have been taught in neuro not me like mind is for me is hypothalamus is sensory function is cognitive somehow so your definition of thoughts and everything i think whatever we think is about reflexes sir what we are taught we were we are trained in this world how we are trained or environmental factors that makes our mind sir okay uh, as a doctor or a doctor right sir? yes okay doctors is difficult to understand because they uh, believe in something that is physically present when they operate on the real reality can you see love you can can you see courage you can you can see the display of courage but you cannot see courage by itself right so there are metaphysical realities which can't be seen the need is even can't be thought i mean if you think about the mind then who is thinking about what the mind itself is thinking about the mind in in ancient literature in the spiritual term they say that in order to uh, reach the state of enlightenment you have to stop the mind from working but then it is the mind that actually helps you first to walk on the path of spirituality and then a time comes when you need to shut down the mind so how do you shut down the mind with the use of mind and then the, that mind also needs to be shut down so it's quite a complex kind of an idea but remember one thing it can't be seen but it is there everywhere so the term that the the spiritualist use is called pure consciousness and it, as a muslim i would use the term to again describe this amr e rabbi so you can say soul you can say energy you can say the will of allah subhanahu wa taala this is all mind but mind can't be described no matter what thank you thank you so much I can't hear you, sir. Loudly, please. Assalamualaikum. Well, thank you. 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 The only thing it can't think is the image of Subhanahu Wa Taala. Subhanahu Wa Taala. It can't. But otherwise, it can think. Uh, you are too young. My daughter is here. She would vouch for it. Boss, sir. Many years back, they used to do this uh, TV serial, Star Trek. Right? Star Trek. In the Star Trek, they had this equipment which at that time people thought was crazy. And today, in mobile phone and your sky is a reality so remember there is there is a sentence i want you to do for all of you for the rest of your life what your mind can conceive and believe it can be achieved whatever your mind can conceive right brothers <coughs> who are bicycle mechanics they made the first aeroplane how they there no engineering experience there no education how could they build it because they believed in it and they conceived it as an idea so everything in this world that you see is or was an idea at one time today it has become a reality what what your mind cannot conceive cannot be created this is beautiful what your mind cannot think conceive will never come into existence but whatever your mind can think conceive will one day be a reality maybe today maybe tomorrow maybe 100 years from now But it is possible. So never say you might get or think you might think of anything. Thank you. Last question, sir. Question is this, sir. We often in our life see ourselves struggling with our concern. Like we, uh, if we concentrate on something, we see our life uh, being uh, in divergence and interface. We get interfered in our routines. If we make some plans, we see ourselves struggling with the uh, interface and uh, divergence. Sir, my question is that how can we get uh, peace of mind and uh, mind regulating steps? Beautiful. The life beauty is at its uh, it has its ups and downs. If you had sunlight 24 hours a day, you would get bored. 
if you had no sun, you would get, you would feel depressed. So the beauty is there is sunlight, there is night, there are weather, um, uh, different weather conditions. There is rain and then there is dryness, there is autumn, there is winter. This is the beauty of life, which means life has varieties. Life has changes and they will always be there with you. So you need to accept that. So your answer to your question is, accept what you can't change, change what you can and ask for the wisdom to be able to identify the difference between what you can change and what you cannot change. Thank you very much. very much for coming here and uh, delivering this very important talk. Uh, we are really grateful to you for uh, this regular interaction of yours here. And uh, every time, uh, I was talking to him earlier on that every time I see his videos or his talks, there is always something new to learn. There is always something to self-reflect and gain a newer advantage and then move on. Uh, from today's lecture, if I could pick two things uh, which he mentioned uh, this morning with us. Power to think. There was a question that human mind is restricted and he very rightly said that it is not restricted. You can imagine anything. We had at uh, this uh, introduction of telepathy in one of the suspense that is novels then uh, the novel name of Devta and it's, I'm not sure whether it's continuing or not but I was a regular reader. So a man would think about somebody who wasn't there and he would also tweet. So earlier on those things which were just imagined but they are not, they are now possible. For example, the gravitational wave, the idea of an Einstein put forward in general theory of relativity. People wouldn't know about what are the gravitational waves and through his equations, it is now a reality. Star Trek that he mentioned, the man would disappear, he would become radiation and appear somewhere else. And this exactly has been tried and maybe in the future we will see some reflection of that reality also. The other thing that he talked about is the positivity. With a positive mind, you can even link in the darkest of your time, the darkest of despair, but you still think that there is a ray of hope at the end of the tunnel. And that is how your mind would work. It would control every action in your body, even if it would control the metabolism and the catabolism in your body if you have a positive mindset. And it would really help you to get to your objectives, even if you think that nothing is possible. So, sir, thank you very much once again. And uh, we would really like to see you uh, some other time to educate us further on this. Thank you.